Well, Jake, let's start with this. The last time Mountaineer fans had an encounter with Jake Spavital, a couple of years ago, heading into the Liberty Bowl, and a lot That's was right. made of the lighthearted Twitter battle between you <laughs> and Dana Holgerson. You want to walk us through how that played out leading up to that football game, that bowl game, the Liberty Bowl? Yeah, you know, leading into that um, that week, we had no idea where we were going to play, and neither did you guys. Like, it was one of those things where we thought we were going to Houston, then we thought we were going uh, out to Georgia for a game that ended up that we were coming to, to the Liberty Bowl and playing West Virginia, which... You know, immediately I just thought, oh, man, I'm going back and playing against West Virginia, the guy that pretty much taught me how to call an offense. And uh, immediately uh, I did an interview with Tony Caridi, and I told him that, you know, I, I called Dana immediately and said that, you know, I know all of your signals, so this is going to be a fun game. <laughs> he immediately went out on Twitter, and he reached out to me and kind of was started the trash talking. I, 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 I responded immediately, and I think that, that we played off of each other, and it turned into being a fun time and a fun weekend as well. And speaking of Texas A&M, when you left West Virginia, it was for a heck of an opportunity for Kevin Sumlin at Texas A&M. And there you inherited Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel. Not a lot of people can say they inherited a Heisman winner, but even fewer people can say that once they did, they found a way to give you more production out of them statistically on the field the following year. Walk us through what that year was like taking over a Heisman winner in Johnny Manziel. Yeah, you know, I learned a lot that season. Um, when I got there, the circus had already begun with Johnny and all the – all the publicity and notoriety that he got, but I thought it was a great opportunity to go in there and coach a, a Heisman Trophy winner and actually have an opportunity to eventually call my own place, which, mm -hmm. you know, that was the end goal for me. But that whole year, you know, you dealt with off the field issues and on the field issues with Johnny, which, you know, it, it made you grow up fast as a, as a ball coach and, and as a mentor as well for these kids. Um, but that whole year was uh, added a different dynamic to what we did offensively. He was one of the first times we've ever had a dual threat quarterback in that system. So, you know, from, a, from an X's and O's standpoint, we evolved on, on quarterback run game and, and how to get him involved in, in uh, like pocket movement throws and everything, which that's where I grew up schematically. But um, just to deal with all the, the notoriety and the publicity that that kid got, which he's probably the most publicized player of our generation, um, you know, it with the social media aspect of things. But mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed my time there. Um, it was fun coaching players like that. And, you know, luckily that the, the success and the trial and error that I had at Texas A&M and then moving on to Cal led me back to West Virginia, which um, ultimately I'm very fired up to be back here. And the last thing I'd like to get your take on, uh, first of all, uh, 10 years ago, you were a quarterback at Missouri State. <laughs> Imagine what's played out since then. You've worked with some of the biggest offensive names in the game, Gus Malzahn, Dana Holgerson, Sonny Dykes. You've watched the game change over right. the course of that 10-year span. But more specifically, you've watched Dana's offense change even since you left following the 2012 season when we adopted this power run game right. to go up with a high-powered pass game. Talk about what this offense looks like from the outside looking in. I want your perspective on that and how it's changed in the last handful of years. Yeah, I think that um, over the – when Dana was a part of the first air raid systems where defenses didn't really know how to defend those. You know, and over the years, you know, defenses now have uh, become pretty familiar with spread systems, which about, I would say, around 90% of college football is the spread mm -hmm. system now. And Dana was on top of his game to go back and implement the power run game. And he was one of the few that started implementing the power run game into the spread system. And now you're starting to see teams evolve to that. But I think um, with how defenses have learned to prepare for the spread system is why Dana's evolved and why the run game is so important to what we do now. And the last time you were here, all we did was break just about every single offensive <laughs> football record we have. No pressure at all on coming back, right, Jake? We love having you back. Hey, I'm fired up to be back.